let me welcome you again to uh, the second talk today uh, uh, of uh, our Beat a Situationist at His Own Game workshop. Uh, we had um, John Wilde this morning, and then uh, uh, we had uh, 10 people uh, or so who went out for a walk using the Reverb, so that was really nice. Um, and thankfully, um, uh, I could see that there were at least fewer network problems as we had on Tuesday when um, the Californians went out for a walk. Uh, but I also could see that there were some indications that maybe some people were at times uh, struggling a little bit. So it's not yet completely resolved, but I think most of you managed to get a bunch of tasks in or those who walked. Um, so it's very happy to see. And later on, we'll be, um, uh, or we can together construct new tasks and um, uh, allow others who will use those tasks, those prompts that we make to get lost based on those. But now, uh, with our second talk, we are uh, going to listen to Anja Podreka, who hails uh, from Slovenia. Was my pronunciation bad, Anja? Okay, it was okay. <laughs> it was okay, okay. Uh, Anja Podreka, who is from Slovenia, she is a spatial artist and she is interested and inspired by nature and its connection with those things that are human. She focuses on natural forces and processes through understanding local people and their behavior. And Anya asks how water shapes lives, and she sees her work also as a passive action towards spreading awareness of the ecology, ethnography, and spatial understanding of rivers as water in the city as well as outside of it. Anya. The floor yeah. is yours. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Babak, for this very nice introduction. So, um, hello to the whole world and you, everywhere you are. Uh, welcome to Slovenia. Welcome to Ljubljana. Uh, as you see, or the city that you're looking at, it's not Ljubljana. It's our second biggest city, uh, Maribor, where I did my first walking with the river Drava and uh, where I have also met my, let's say, one of the best co-workers. Uh, he's a kayak man. A very great sportsman as well, and a human as, as a human, um, Mr. Uh, Gregor Zdravec. Uh, I was hoping that he would be joining us today, but maybe he doesn't find a way. However, he is going to be with us um, in visual, virtual language. Uh, so we are starting in Maribor at River Drava at, at his kayak. And uh, why I'm, I'm introducing him, why did I wanted to mention him and he's part of my presentation, because when I do start my, uh, my walking, when I start to research the city and when I want to know the river, um, because it's, I sh usually I don't have time to really deepen into the river as much as I would want to, I always find the kayak people um, because they know the river in their, in their, best, you know, in their best way. They know each, each meter of the, of the river. And basically, uh, usually their interviews in my uh, walks is like river talking. So uh, that's why we are sitting now on the kayak and we are going through the city. Uh, so first of all, I would like to introduce a bit of how do I feel the water? How do I see it? How do I, uh, let's say, um, perceive it? And um, I've been working with uh, water now for a few years since I graduated my master's in uh, Holland, in Utrecht. And um, there I started to really understood and also I practiced water through painting. Um, and uh, I do pouring painting, um, and that's where I see how water actually shapes the lives and the landscapes that we are just a little, little part of it um, at any kind of scape, at any kind of size. And they behave, I mean, it, it's behaving every time the same, but every time differently. And the pattern that you're looking at is the very, very, for me, holistic or very um, spiritual um, geometrical form. Uh, and it inspires me or amazes me every time when I see it drop falling on the surface, making the perfect circles, not even one, but many, many, many circles. And that doesn't matter the size. So every time I see the drop falling on the surface and these perfect circles, which is our universe, which is our way of thinking how the, the seismography travels through the many, many, many kilometers, um, that's how I see the, the nature working with us and trying to communicate with us. But lots of times we, I don't know, we just cannot 
perceive it or get its messages. Um, therefore, I see the water as a person, as a character, as an intelligence, as a matter, as a body, as, of course, as an ecosystem, and, of course, as a ritual, if we come back to the human point of living. Um, so water, for me, it's something that might, it might now sound a bit like messages from the far, far away future or even from the other galaxy, but I see and I feel the water as kind of like a potential material or matter to which has its own intelligence, and it could be much more useful for us than it is just as a water or even less as a water in the city. So um, I would like to take you to the river because we are online and because we have this, uh, let's say, limited space and um, kind of like technology. Um, I couldn't be there on the river, but I said I'm going to take you to the river uh, at the kayak and um, hopefully we will meet somewhere there. Uh, there is no sound, don't worry. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> um, so I hope you got some connection with the river. Um, this is how I met Gregor. Uh, he was part of my performance uh, in Atrika Drava, the river Drava. Uh, so he had his own performance together with the dancers and the walking performance. So what I do, my practice is that I talk with people around or living around the river working with the river, then I combine their interviews into kind of like a half an hour long recording. And sometimes I manage to get some kind of in interaction or in entertainment for uh, my audience, sometimes not. Um, so that's how I, that's how we came together. Um, and that's how he's also practicing his practice in the winter. Uh, it's special. It's very special to see frozen rivers, as you might know especially in the cities. Uh, so I will start now with a river that uh, has also kind of like impressed me with its own history and the tragedy that happened or is still happening to, to it. 
So I will take you now to Riga, which I have visited uh, two months ago. Uh, well, the problem with the Riga, as you can see, is as any other city, uh, any other river in the big city. So you come into the city and you don't hear it. And what you hear and see from the river is, um, let's say, a lake, which is in use of the human. So uh, it's transferred into some kind of like transformation. I mean, sorry, it's, it's transformed into some kind of transfer usage. Um, and what is this that you're looking at is the memorial to the river Riza, which actually made and gave the life to the city. Uh, that's how Riga got its name. And that's the memorial of the river that was primary going and is still actually flowing under the city right at this top bottom. Uh, it's three meters. If you dig deeper, three meters in the soil, you will come to the river, which was and is still here since the beginnings. And Riga got its name after it in 15th century, and that's where they decided to cover it with the concrete and cement and um, stones. And that's the, that's the memorial of the river in the city, which gave a life to an existence of the city. And that made me think uh, how actually we treat rivers and how they gave us life and what we are doing with the rivers today. We give them a stone memorials. Uh, so this is uh, the background. What you see is the city, how it looked like. So the Riga city, how it looked like at the beginning, where there was a river flowing. So as you can see, and probably you recognize that the river gave a life uh, to the city. It protected it. In not only protected, but also it gave an existence, it gave a reason to live there. Um, as well as you know, the rivers give food to the to the to the to the people to this area. They bring the material, lots of rich material. Um, people who know how to live with rivers nowadays, usually, I mean, they are rare. We find them at the corners of the planet but they know exactly which flood will bring what kind of material and how they will use it. So instead of going to the supermarket, uh, they wait for the flood because they know that the flood is good for something, that the flood is not a threat. But um, so nowadays rivers are a, a threat. We are afraid of it. And uh, God know, you know that the flood would happen in the city, right? Not even at the corners of the, of the city. So. Um, that's where I would like to start my talk, actually, with this problem. Um, that river usually gave a life to the existence of the city, but now today uh, we hardly hear it. Um, so I'm going back to the basics. As you know, rivers are the planet's uh, blood. It's a blood system. It's a ve uh, ve vesseling system. Uh, and um, when I spoke with my kayak guys, <laughs> usually they're guys, um, it's not easy to, to, to understand the, 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 the problem that we are facing with, the problem that we don't see the river as a, as a vein. Uh, we don't see the river as a, as a tree. Um, one, once I was talking with Gregor and he said, you know, the river is a body. You don't throw yourself on a body, do you, just like that? You don't put it in the frames of concrete just to be in your usage. Um, so if you look at my image at the background, you see a lot of lots of lots of rivers and small rivers and big rivers and floods and currents. And the river is the current. It's, it's a pressure. It's a life that, that, that it's going around the whole planet. And if we imagine putting one of these branches uh, or even the main flow into concrete um, let's say, frame, you know that logically the other veins will stop doing their what they do or what they should do. So what I'm trying to say that uh, if, you, if you block even one part, where is the city, um, there, is a, there are consequences 50 to, to 50 to 100 kilometers around or even more. Uh, at the same time, river beds and ground waters are the waters that we are drinking. And we all know how, how easy it is to have a water which is not in our use, right? So we just got the virus from the water. Maybe um, I, I, there, there are rumors that the coronavirus was put in the water. That's how it spread and um, so on and so on. So rivers are our um, blood and uh, they are they're our, 
let's say they are giving us life, they're giving us existence, but what we do is that in the cities we put them in the concrete canals and uh, we take away their character, we take away the float, the, flo uh, the, the flow, uh, and um, where I'm going is this. So we all know how dams and hydro power plants are working and influencing reverse flow, reverse life. Uh, I'm not going through all what you can read. Um, I'm sure you can read it by yourself. <laughs> But these are these are kind of like, let's say, seven steps that or six steps that um, are part of our lives every day if we are aware of it or not. And um, it's of course part of the global global warming problem. Um, but where I'm going with the next slide is the last two points. So the hydropower fuels violence, money laundering, and corruption, especially at the Balkan. Um, where I'm actually taking my information from is the society um, Balkan River Defense, which is really working hard to protect the rivers at the Balkan because they are, let's say, the last pieces of rivers which are still wild, which are still free, uh, at least in Europe. Um, so dams are definitely not the green energy um, that they are. They were promoted um, ten few decades ago. Um, they're doing just the contrast, uh, not not the best. I mean, not what, what they should have. Um, so what am I trying to say is that why rivers um, do make hooks and why they would need the space and why they are as they are um, is because um, they have a spiral flow. So when I was reading uh, this book, which I really, really um, recommend, is that... Um, when we open up the pipe, uh, we can see if we look at really clo closely and carefully that the, none, none of the streams are going down, straight, straight forward down, but they are spiral inside. So the physics of, of the river, the physics of the water is spiral. Um, and the river needs a space to make these hooks because the water inside of it, inside of the flow, it's going like this. So um, the, what, that's why the river is, is it's, it's taking its space to, to flow. That's why the river should not flow straight forward. Um, so what also that, that's how you see how the flow works. So it's all the time circling as our planet, as everything in our life, the river, I mean, the water is circling as well. And uh, where I would like to take you with my thinking is that um, at the middle, you see the shelf in the, the shell, and the shells are shaping the water. And um, when I was reading this book, I said to myself, our planet should not be called Earth, it should be called Aqua, because everything is based on water, is shaped in water, we grow in the water, and we flow with the water, we move with the water. Um, so the, the, the Earth is just one part of it, so the water is flowing around the, around the planet, in the, in the, in the air, if you take a look closely in the shapes of the clouds, you will see that there is actually the shape of water. Um, if you take a look at the traces in the soil, in say in, in, at Mars, uh, we can see the water streams going there million, million years ago, but there is still a, a life there. I mean, it's, it's not that there is a life, but it's a shadow of the life, and this shadow is imprinted in the soil. Um, so then I was reading about the bones, even our bones are not straight, they are a bit spiral because they were shaped in the water as well as the inside of the bone, it's like a sponge. Um, so water is, is, is all of us, it's, it's, we are the water, water is we and so on. So what I'm trying to say is that um, I realized that the water has much bigger influence, much bigger importance to our life and even its flow it's inside of our blood and so on so i'm not going to philosophy uh, philosoph much more um, i'm trying to get you here where you can see how river flows and why it needs space in the city because what's usually what i hear from urbanists and architects they say well that's just in the city then the river has space there and there and there and i say no no it's not just in the city it it has to have a space in the city uh, because, like I said, it's not just in the city. The river has to have a space to flow and to flood um, everywhere 
where it needs to. So it, it, the river creates its own space uh, where, it, where it wants to flood and where it feels like there is a space to flood, not where you want, the, where, where you want it to flood. Um, so as we know, uh, the, uh, the, red, uh, the right side, I have different uh, waves and how the, the hooks are formed and deformed as well. And that's another part why the river needs a space and it should not be in the concrete uh, frame because it's, as we know, rivers changes their flow and their, stream, uh, their streams, so they should have a space for that. Um, and before, uh, maybe my, my slide should be a bit different, I'm sorry, but if we come back to, to the hydro plants and um, the dams, um, so the waters are politically, uh, let's say, guided, and that's of course not right. Um, everything, but everything on our planet is politically guided or formed. Um, however, in Slovenia, we have achieved uh, not so long time ago, it was 11th of July, where we defeated polit politics in the city. And 90% uh, of voters voted against the law that uh, wanted to privatize access to the water. So, like I said, I'm not going to read what you can read by yourself, but what I'm trying to say is that politics definitely affects um, the, the waters, definitely um, we have to deal with it and we have to fight against it. Um, not Like we were already talking with others, not every one of us are protest people. I'm not a, I'm not a person who goes to protest, I'm not a person who yells and um, would like to, let's say, put my own life on risk to achieve something. But I do believe in small actions and I do believe in what I'm doing right now. So mouth to mouth and uh, eye to eye, ear to ear. Um, and that's exactly how our um, three societies fight uh, and they're still fighting and got the, the, the referendum. So what was all about? Um, the politics, our government came out with the um, with the idea that they would like to privatize the access to the waters all over the country. And thank God we have these people who are fighters, the true fighters, I would say, who saw it, who heard it, who were aware of it, and they achieved not only to the, the, the possibility of referendum, but we also won the referendum in 90% against it. Uh, and we achieved that um, the, the government a bit took a step aside and um, thought about their actions. And uh, we have protected the rivers and the lakes and the uh, sea that we have, a small part of the sea in our country. Um, so, of course, it's important to be aware that politics is everywhere and that politics do affect on our access to drink water, to, 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 to have a fresh water and to have, a pri uh, to have free access to our lakes, rivers and the sea. Um, if you don't mind, at the same time, I cannot resist to one story that I've seen um, a National Geogra Geographic, uh, Geographic um, uh, series about the, our planet, where it showed how the monkeys deal with this success. Now, the problem was that there was a desert and there was a kind of like a small area of water, uh, part of the, some kind of lake that uh, appeared in the in the desert and one group of the monkeys saw it and of course they went to it they drank the water there they, they, they then they took the part in the shadows they moved away but some monkeys stayed at the site to protect the area from the in, in from the others and who were the others it was just another group of monkeys which were not just another sort of monkeys and um, i was of course curious what's going to happen what the nature does how the nature deals with this problem that we call it pol politic or um, access to the water. Who has the right to assess the water? And what they did is that the, the monkeys who were protecting the, the, the lake, the small lake, they attacked the other group to the monkey, to the, of the monkeys. They killed the babies and the mothers uh, just to protect the access to the water. So here I'm, have, I'm giving you already one, maybe one question for later. Um, what is right and what's wrong? How, how the nature, how would we behave in the nature if we were nature? <laughs> um, then I would like to also point out uh, some, some kind of like um, clues or statements of my, of my colleague, uh, Gregor Zadravec. Um, when we were talking and discussing my, my talk uh, a few weeks ago, 
uh, I really liked these four sentences that um, he came up with. Um, I'll just give you a few seconds to read it. So what you can see at the background is uh, his ritual on the kayak that he's doing. So what he does is that at some point uh, he starts to, he, he found his place in the river, on the river, and he does a few uh, rolls around. And when I saw it in life, I said, my God, this guy's like a whale, you know, like this water and the whole kayak and him, him himself, it's so spiritual, it's so... Um, let's say very very connected to so how the how the human becomes part of the water and the water cleans him and so on so it's like it's his ritual and um, he did this ritual at my walking as well and at, like I said looking at him doing that it's really looking like a well with, which goes up and down and blows the water um, out to, to breathe uh, and I really kind of like can't resist not to point out um, if we have lived by the river sources, we would not be misled. So what he wants to say that we would understand its meaning and uh, function in, in this world much better than we do. And we wouldn't be a stupid parasites who do destroy their, its host. Um, so that's something maybe to also to think of later. Um, now I'm coming to the end where I reach my problem, uh, which I would also like to give out to you. Um, so the problem that I'm facing every time when I come to the city is that the city tries to or wants to kind of like destroy or erase the river just be, just to be in its service. Uh, and uh, of course, like I said, the rivers are in the concrete frame, uh, like I was pointing out before. So if you put the river in the concrete frame, you take away its character, you take away the space for it to be a body you take away its ritual, you destroy the ecosystem, uh, and you create a dead lake, as usually kayak people tell me, that we live actually not at the river, but we live at the lake, which was not made by the nature, but by human. So when we live by the lake, we destroy the ecosystem. That means that the lot of methane, it starts to happen uh, at the bottom of the river. So we have, so we have negative, let's say, source, outcome source. So instead of the fresh water and the fresh ecosystem, living ecosystem, we are destroying it, the ecosystem, its ground and up, up, up ground, the, the air uh, in the city. Um, so instead of when we say, let's go to the river to have some fresh air, well, think twice what you say, um, because maybe the methane is coming up from the river uh, because the, the ecosystem was destroyed. Um, what we are looking at is the Maribor city, and um, the Maribor city is really interesting city when it comes to the river, because in 1960s, that was the last time when, let's say, that the river had its space, and when I spoke with the people who re still remember this time, they say that they were really terrified of the river, but terrified so much that they had respect to the river. Um, respect because it was flowing so widely that its its sound was was terrifying and its flow was even harsh, I mean harsher than than the sound, uh, because River Drava is is coming from um, Italy, uh, from Austria, Italy, so it's flowing through many countries and what is most important is flowing downwards from the uphills. That's why it brings a lot and lots and lots of material. And uh, when you see that material flowing uh, on the river with, with the flow that it had, it, it could be terrifying, but that was the character of, of River Drava. Um, and now it's a, it's a lake and um, they don't hear it anymore. Um, but what it happened is that the, the, the bank of the river, uh, which was usually um, very empty and um, green or full of the material that river brought, is now the parking place in the on concrete uh, parking place, which is actually once a year a place for the very, very great and mainstream, I'm sorry to say, but very mainstream festival. It's a music festival called Lint. And uh, since then, the Maribor had, has a completely different life. And it kind of like, it's, it got its 
spot on the on the map uh, because everyone from Slovenia are going in this uh, part of the year to Maribor to enjoy the, the music, to enjoy everything that comes with the mainstream festival. Uh, um, why I do say mainstream is because mainstream brings a lot of um, pollution. Uh, so we have light pollution because of con concerts and lights, also for the fireworks, of course, for the opening. We have sound pollution uh, and, of course, plastics everywhere. I'm not talking about the, the, the cars and all the other smoke that comes with the, with the festival like this size. So the size of the festival is all over the bank, uh, through the whole city. Um, and what you see on the right side, this yellow symbol, that's the symbol of the, of the festival, uh, when, uh, when it starts to appear. So you can imagine concerts and concerts by, 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 the, by, the, by the bank. Um, so what has happened is that when they took away the character of the river, when they kind of like framed it, when they managed it, uh, they, they get, the, 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 the city got another life. So this, uh, it's a very interesting exchange what happens and what is probably happening to lots of cities around the world um, when the human says that's enough, we would like to control you because we are living here now. But of course, Many, many, many years ago, a uh, river gave life to this city. It, it gave it uh, existence, as we know. So here we come into the contrast of urbanism and living with the river, understanding the river. And usually when I talk with the architects, they say, yeah, but what do you want us to do? So here is the, here is the part where um, I'm giving you um, a space to think about it. and. Um, when I then then you, then so I speak with the architects, I speak with the people who live in the city, I speak with the let's say um, all these older people, so the elders who are usually w very um, smart people who still have the wisdom of of people who lived there before, where the city was different, um, and they have the wisdom of their own ancestors behind. And then I speak with the kayak people, so I get different perspectives how the city should live with the river. Um, and what I agree with is that we should think about what kind of consumers of nature we are, like what kind of consumers um, of the rivers in the city we are. So I believe that my opinion, the solution is to think about these questions because if we have a ritual to the nature, then we, of course, first of all, we respect it, we understand it, we are getting there somehow. That's why also National Geographic is doing lots and lots and lots of series about nature and the planet to protect it somehow, to get awareness of it, of its importance. So that's the number one step. Um, another step is, okay, we go to the nature, what do we do there? How do we treat it? How do we understand it? Why do we live there and what do we take away? Um, Therefore, we're talking about sustainable relationship, which is more and more and more, uh, let's say, part of our lives. Um, we are talking about global warming. We are talking about pollution. We are a bit sick and tired of it. Um, I'm also a teacher. At, uh, uh, I'm teaching arts. So I'm in, in contact with students, uh, a new generation, all the time, every day. And uh, they're sick and tired of these talks. Um, but the other word that is coming to, to the surface is sustainable relationship. So what is a sustainable relationship and how do we build it um, with the river in the city? So here I'm giving the words to you and uh, hopefully I wasn't too fast or too, um, too, too slow, I don't know. And I gave you some input to, to think about. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anya. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, yeah. It was very nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, you're very... Uh, correct in um, uh, identifying the paradox uh, of um, uh, of what humans particularly of course in urbanized environments face where they they do manipulate the environment and through that have to somehow or are yeah no they do somehow uh, have to uh, um, put boundaries on uh, on nature right because yeah, otherwise uh, how are we particularly in large numbers going to live um, but at the same time um, as you pointed out with your example in Maribor, um, uh, but historically uh, humans think they can do, uh, they can manipulate everything to their 
heart's desire, uh, forgetting about uh, the symbiosis that is essential for survival in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, I could bring up a few questions, uh, but I fear they will have very long answers. So if someone else okay. in the room, so I, I will leave off. So if someone else in the room has a remark or a thought or a question or a comment, please uh, uh, come forward and uh, throw it out. Yeah, sure. Not all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to make hi guys. Hello. Hey, Cecilia. Hi. hi, I'm Cecilia from Buenos Aires. How are you? I just have sort of like an observation. Um, I am from Argentina and, and the city of Buenos Aires is the capital and it's a city in which the, the um, urbanism of the city is on the riverside. Although the city has been constructed just giving like it's back to the river. Uh -huh. So it's it's always been sort of um, very uncomfortable and 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 just not very natural. And um, I am living now it's not on the capital itself, like on the center itself. I am on a suburb in which mm -hmm. it is just closer and to like the delta area. And mm -hmm. all of this part is it's been um, like the urbanism of the area it has been just made overlooking to the river. Mm -hmm. And so you integrate uh, and like the delta and, 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 and the riverside and all the activities and, and the pace of the people. It is yeah. very different. And you yeah, have like a lot of, yeah, of people just taking like their boats on their backs and just barefoot in winter uh, and, 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 it changes like a lot also like the respect and, and the pace of right. people, you know, uh, yeah. in the summertime at like, at like the seven or eight, 8 PM, everyone is sort of like on the riverside and just looking at the river <laughs> and having yeah. a drink and kids playing. And it changes really a lot. And on the capital center, what you do have is all oh, this is towers and towers, like the micro center and the banking area, and they just block the 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 um, and like the view, and you have a lot of wind. Like you cannot just walk in with like a skirt because they end up up here <laughs> because of all like the wind it creates, and it's really like uncomfortable and a lot of pollution and da da da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is definitely a problem because uh, we started to with this in uh, awareness of global warming, we started to enjoy nature much more. But how do we enjoy it and what do we leave behind and what do we do later with this new awareness? That's the, that's the question. Yeah. 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 A lot of people just began just to flock over and to like the Delta and the, and the islands. And you have a lot of, of activities, including like all the children just picking up, you know, all the plastic from the Delta side and a lot of, of, of small yeah. organizations involving like a lot of of like the community action, but it just takes for you just to look at the river. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the first yeah. step. Yeah, to to enjoy its flow, its peace. Um, and then I say, um, do do you listen to it? I mean, do we hear the rivers in in the in the city? Like sometimes I I do. I mean, every time when I come to the city, first thing I go is the river, and then when I sit there, I'm sad because I realize that I don't hear it. Yeah, and that that makes me sad. I mean, I'm happy to be there. I'm so glad that the river is there. But then I ask myself, wait a minute, do I hear it? No, I don't because it's a lake. And that's that's the problem. Yeah. That we should hear it, but we don't. Yeah. And, I, I want to point out with that, uh, Anya. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for you, it's obvious because you are in Ljubljana, uh, yeah. as are uh, Brane and Irena and Katerina. Uh, but you have a river flowing through your city that is not navigable. Uh, you can only, you know, you can use a canoe on the river, but you used to be able, uh, like a hundred years ago, uh, yeah. to take a real boat from the Mediterranean, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, and yeah. sail or, or, or yeah, sail down the river to Ljubljana. Uh, but that was because the river was much deeper, uh, and mm -hmm. now it is not. It's very shallow. So you have a stream like flowing through the yeah. city, whereas yeah. it used to be a, a navigable river. Uh, so how things yeah. change yeah yeah we still do have a place where we know we know that there was a port 
uh, and we know where the flow was going and how they were traveling around the river. And yes, we do we do hear the flow of the river in the city, and it's really really nice to hear it. So we are kind of like maybe lucky, but at the same time, you it's not hard to see the concrete frame because it's very huge and very obvious. Uh, yeah. But it's not so dead as as in other cities. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's so an active part of the city. That's true. Um, before yeah. we wrap up, I have a small question. Um, sure. Now, uh, this also uh, is Ellie Bry still with us? Yes, I think she is. Um, so the river in in Paris is of course called the Seine, uh, and the river that is uh, covered up in Brussels is called the Seine. Now, uh -huh. I noticed that the brick that you showed of uh, Riga. Uh, of in Riga, uh, representing uh, a marker for where the river flows, it said Ridzen. Ridzen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you know uh, what, or does Ellie know, uh, why all these things have the word Zen in them? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, my my suspicion, I before I learned about the one in in Slovenia that also sounds the same, is that my it's probably pre-Indo-European word for river. Okay. I was thinking oh, maybe well, it exists in Slovenia too. It's probably further back than that. So, uh, okay. Well, actually, yeah. I, it, it was not Slovenia. It's in um, uh, Latvia, uh, where uh, Anja Latvia, showed yeah. the, the brick. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Well, I did, I did quickly do a check, and it was a bit of a struggle to figure it out. But sen uh, is uh, a word that means dragnet, so what you use to catch fish with. Really? Wow. Yeah. So, so I could, I could find that the Seine in Paris uh, has this connection with the, the word for dragnet, uh, but I can't confirm whether it's the same in Brussels or in uh, uh, Latvia, but I suspect that it might be. Um, Thank you right. very much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Because <laughs> no, that no. means that, that the river was in, in, the, in the use of people and that's why they gave yeah. That's why the Neymar is coming from, you know, that it was in the in the usage of people to get to get food. So yeah. it's not just yeah. it's not just the, the, the place and, and the material, but also the food. So um, yeah. thank you very much. I didn't know about yeah, that. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure. Huh? I only know that it's the case for Paris. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure answer. if it's also the case for the other two. All right. Thank you very much. This is what we have time for, Anya. Um, it was uh, very nice to uh, listen to. Uh, to your discussion of the river and its use and its active use. Um, and uh, I hope you stick around. I will, now, yeah, I will. Thank you very much to all of you too. It was my pleasure to um, be in connection. Um, this was my first art talk, so thank you very much for uh, <laughs> for listening. <laughs> and uh, it was super, super nice feeling that my voice went globally. So uh, thank you very much.